And that is that God has called each of us and all of us to be chaos busters. That's the point. And uh, we begin with a midrash, uh, an old Jewish story here. A midrash says that the Almighty will send the Messiah when every Jew in the world faithfully observes Shabbos or Shabbat two Saturdays in a row. And once, long ago, it is said, observance was perfect on the first Saturday. Okay. But on the second Saturday, an owner of an apple orchard in a remote Hungarian village, valley, excuse me, did not get the word. Somehow, the importance of total abstinence from labor did not reach his mind and his heart. Consequently, on that fateful Saturday, second Saturday, he rode his donkey out to his apple orchard and promptly filled his bushel basket. The world moaned, mourned. Again, those apples, it's always an apple. You notice that, <laughs> right? Satan smiled, and Elijah wept, they say. We'll unpack this indirectly, but I want you to get the feeling for what we're talking about, because God's called all of us to be chaos busters. So I want to talk a little bit about chaos and the connection with Rosh Hashanah. Now, among other things, Rosh Hashanah represents, commemorates God's making the world, creating the world long ago. And so we read at the beginning of the Torah, it's in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth, and then this phrase which I'm going to unpack for you in Hebrew. Hayata tohu vavohu, and there was, and it was formless and void. When we say formless and void, what word which we've introduced already comes to mind? What? Chaos, exactly. The great enemy is chaos. Um, in this picture from Genesis 1, everything was formless, void, no meaning, no purpose, no direction, no nothing. The earth was tohu vavohu. Koshek al pene tahom and darkness was on the face of the tahom. That's the second word I want to unpack for you a little bit. Tahom means the deep, the deep. But also what we have here is a reference that ancient people would have picked up very easily. The tahom represents the ancient Babylonian goddess of the tumultuous sea. Her name was Tiamat, Tiamat. And so to home, you hear the resonance or the similarity to Tihamat. And so here we have God creating the heavens and the earth and taking out of that which is tohu vavohu, formless and void, meaningless, directionless, no content, nothing. It's the angry, tumultuous sea, to home. And then God said, let there be what? Light. Let there be light. What is the light? The light divides the darkness. It is the beginning of the creative process where God gives differentiation and meaning and purpose and love has a chance to flourish and everything good. See, Tiamat, that primeval goddess of chaos, to the ancient mind, was at war with this process. God says, Tiamat doesn't stand a chance. God creates order. Now, let me just say parenthetically that, you know, yes, this is, the Genesis 1 passage is speaking to people who lived a long time ago who got it in terms of this kind of mythological construct of Tiamat and Marduk and all these other false gods. But what's interesting is we find Genesis 1, and this is true for many parts of the Bible, it speaks at multiple levels. Because I had the privilege of studying with real scientists, PhDs from, from uh, Cornell University, and uh, believers, and uh, what I learned, and Sid was back there, he remembers this, is that also Genesis 1 follows the created order from a very specific kind of um, a representation which really fits what cosmology says with the order of steps from, you know, just a big hydrogen gas and then the 
blessing of the gas and that creating light and then ultimately eventuating in, in the modern world. So sometimes people get hung up, they think, well, if it's connected to mythology, therefore Genesis is one of mythology, and I don't think that's the case at all. I just think God communicates in multiple languages. Isn't that wonderful? He cre he, that's the way he is, and we can take great uh, confidence and, and uh, joy in that reality. Okay, so God said, let there be light, and chaos is begun to be banished from the world, begun to be. Now let's bring this a little bit up close and personal, because we're dealing big things that happened a long time ago. Do you know anything about chaos in your life? Or am I the only one? I will tell you about a funny, chaotic thing in my house growing up. So my mom, Beatrice Nickel of blessed memory, was a brilliant woman. She was, I only wish you knew her, because she was funny, like so funny she could, you'd fall down laughing, she had this, she could have written for Woody Allen or anybody, I mean she was, but she was a very brilliant person and had a lot of interest, great with kids, and and she was just a wonderful mom, except she was not created by God to be a homemaker. My house was filled with antiques, with this much antique dust on the Savonarola chairs. In my house, you had to get up very early in the morning if you wanted to take a shower. Why? Because there was like one dry towel in the whole place, stuffed, <laughs> wadded up in the linen closet. And if you didn't get there first, when it was your turn to take a shower, the towel was already all used. That was my house. And I think when I got married, I thought Sue was gorgeous and funny and great and wonderful and still do. But I tell you, once we got married and I looked in my sock drawer and all the light colored socks are here and all the dark ones are here, ordered, I fell more deeply in love. You laugh? If you know anything about chaos, you know what I'm talking about. Now, there's different kinds of chaos, and the kind I'm describing is relatively, relatively benign. Some of you have grown up in homes, and you know chaos at a much deeper level. But chaos really is the enemy. And, and what we see here is that in the high holidays, our job is to gather together as chaos busters. Chaos busters. Now, this is suggested a touch from our Haftorah portion today. So let me just read a little of it to you. You heard these, although I'm not sure this was part of the English reading. But anyhow, on your walls, O Jerusalem, I have set watchmen. All the day and all the night they shall never be silent. You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a a praise in the earth. Now this Haftorah portion is looking to the end of the age when chaos is really dealt with and when we Jews are not kicked from one place to another and experiencing all the wounds, some self-inflicted and others not. It's looking to that day. But what it shows us is it's a call to the watchmen to give God no rest. In other words, in participating and calling out God, end the chaos. And that is part of the high holiday experience, as I'll explain a little more completely as we go on. You see, we are mandated to be chaos busters. And when we come together, we are ordering the world of our community, and by extension, cooperating with all Jews everywhere, and I'll include all believers too, because all believers in Yeshua are in this process as well. But we are also joining the heavenly throng calling out to God for justice and goodness and mercy and order on the earth. There is a real connection between those of us who are still here in this world and those who have passed on, and that's yet for another sermon. But all of us, no matter where we are, are called to be, ghost, are called to be chaos busters. So what I want to encourage you all to do is to recognize that when we get together and we say the alchet, and we say, the sins which I have committed and we have committed, 
some of those sins you're going to say to yourself, I know it because I've been there too. Wait a minute, I didn't do that. And it may very well be true. You haven't. You'll find some you have done, believe me. But what we're doing as chaos busters is we're imploring God on behalf of our people to bring the kind of order that the high holiday suggests, even the order in service suggests this in all of its complexity. We're asking God to, to order our world and order the whole world. And our calling out to him to do that is what high holidays in part, but significantly are all about. We help the he to heal the world by our being together, protesting chaos in the unseen realm. And then after the high holidays, we do our part to protest it in practical ways. In other words, it's not just the way I'm telling you, but it's also we work against chaos no matter, wherever, no matter, no matter where we are and wherever we can have some influence in our families, dealing with chaos in our own individual lives, and helping to make the world a better place. So just keep in mind, during this high holiday season, you and I and all of us and all our people in Zoom land, we are called together to worship. We are called together to be chaos busters for the glory of Hashem. Shabbat shalom, everybody. And Happy New Year to you all.